Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create vector portraits using Google Drawings. One benefit of vector drawings is you can zoom in on them and they maintain their sharpness. As opposed to a static image like a JPEG that gets fuzzy and pixelated when you zoom in. Plus, it gives the drawings a graphic, illustrated look. This probably looks a little bit more challenging than it actually is. Most of the process is actually just tracing shapes. So to get started, we're going to open a new browser and then go to Google Drive. From there, you'll click on New, then go to More, and click on Google Drawings. So this area here with the gray and white checkerboard, this is your blank canvas. The technique works best if you're working from a reference image, so the first thing you'll need to do is figure out what image you want to use. You can look up a picture online, or you can use a photo you have saved to your computer. I try to find a photo with good colors, good highlights and shadows, and good resolution. If this number down here at the bottom is at least 800 by 800, it'll probably work pretty good for this drawing. So when you find the image you want to use, just copy it from here and paste it into the blank canvas in Google Drawings. Another option would be to use an image you have saved to your computer, in which case you can find the picture in a separate window, then drag and drop it into the blank canvas. All right, once you have your picture in Google Drawings, we're going to go ahead and crop and resize everything so it fits nicely on your canvas. You can also use the crop tool here to crop out anything you don't want to use for your drawing. Once that's done, you can drag the image into the top corner, then make it as big as it'll get by dragging the corner. Make sure to drag the corner and not the sides. We don't want to stretch the image and make it look weird. Now you can resize the canvas to fit by dragging this gray corner in the bottom right. Next thing we want to do is make a copy of our image so that we have one copy on the canvas and one to the side to use as our reference. Make sure to slide this gray bar at the bottom so you can see both images at the same time. So throughout this drawing, you'll mostly be using one tool. It's called the Polyline tool. You can find this at the top by clicking on the Line tool and then scrolling down to click on Polyline. Notice that once you do that, this Polyline tool will show up on the toolbar here for a quick access. This entire process is really just a matter of tracing shapes from your reference image, then dragging them over to the image on your canvas. So you'll trace shapes with the Polyline tool simply by clicking along the edge of a shape. One thing I found helpful was to start with shapes in the background and then slowly work your way forward. Once you get back to the point where you started, the shape will be complete. And the default color is light blue with a thin black outline, but the color of the inside and the color of the outline can both be changed here. And if you don't like any of the default colors, you can also create custom colors with this plus button at the bottom. The only other tool you'll use regularly is this arrow tool, which allows you to move shapes around. Once you have a shape traced on this side, you can easily move it over to your canvas and put it in place. This can be done in so many different ways, so feel free to play around with it. Notice here that I'm imagining the cape as one piece that goes behind the back of the head. I could have also done this in two separate pieces, but I thought this would be quicker. Alright, I have this darker red shape here and I want to place it behind the lighter red collar of the cape. To do this, you're going to need to right click or two finger click, then go down to order. This will allow you to change the order and place things below other shapes. I did this quite a bit throughout the process, so it's helpful to remember the keyboard shortcut of holding Command and the up or down arrow to do this more quickly. In this example, I had to change the order of this background shape probably about 30 times before it got where I needed it. So now my dark red shape is behind the lighter red shape. Okay, another technique I use pretty often was the edit points. So if you need to fine tune any of your shapes, just right click or two finger click the shape and go to edit points. This will allow you to make changes to the shape to get it to line up just how you want it. I will say this polyline tool can be pretty dumb sometimes. I created several messes that look like this. If this happens to you, I found it's best to just hit the escape button, delete your shape, and start over. Notice here that I needed to move this shape backwards six times before I got it into the right position. So it's helpful here to remember the command and down arrow shortcut, which made it much quicker. All right, let's fast forward to my next pro tip. All right, notice here that I have a shaded area. I want to put this in the right position, but sometimes it's hard to know where the right position is because my reference photo is already buried under these other layers. So here's the solution. 
First of all, move the shape you're trying to place off the canvas. Click on the background of the reference photo and change its order to bring it to the front. Now do the same thing with the shape that you want to place. Bring it to the front. Now you can line your shape up perfectly where it belongs. And then you'll click on your reference photo again and send it to the back. All right, let's keep going. So when I started trying to work on the eyes, I discovered that you could zoom in and out with the magnifying glass tool. This made it really helpful for small detail areas. You should also know that your drawing will go through some pretty horrifying phases. Here I use the shape tool to make a really quick pupil for the eye. And also used it to make the white glare dot on the eye. Feel free to practice and play with these other shapes too. You might find them useful. Here's where I really started noticing the black outlines around my shapes. It's really easy to get rid of them by clicking the border color tool here and changing them to transparent. You might like the way it looks and want to keep these outlines. When I went to make my second eye, I just copied and pasted the first eye, then flipped it horizontally and moved it into position by bringing the background photo back to the front. This looks kind of cool like this. Doctor Strange has entered the Avatar state. At this point, you'll notice I was comfortable enough with the tool to start freehanding some shapes. I didn't actually trace them on the reference image first, but some shapes might not need that. For areas like the forehead, you can probably get away with just estimating the shapes. For more detailed, specific shapes, I found it best to trace. By the time I got to the hair, I really figured this process out. I started by blocking in the full shape of the hair, and this was going to be my medium brown color. Next, I went in and traced all the dark areas and made them black. And then I traced the white highlights and positioned them. Some of the highlights I was able to freehand with the polyline tool. Then I went back into this highlighted area and added some of the medium color. I think it looks pretty good. I finished everything off by adding a square shape for a solid background color. Then I deleted the original reference image. And then I thought it needed a thick black outline around everything, so I added that too. Kind of gave it more of a comic book feel. All right, that's pretty much it. Once everything looks good, you go up to File and click on Share. Give your drawing a name, then share it with your teacher. Once you get a hang of this process, it'll allow you to create some pretty cool drawings. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with.